Important disclosures. None of these should be considered financial advice or investment advice. This video is for information purposes only and should not be relied upon as legal, business, investment, or tax advice. Consult your own advisors as to those matters. Join this channel for more learning materials. Drop comments below to assist in improving our content. The basic explanation of Bitcoin is that it's a digital currency with no government or banks involved. Although it is still a mystery who invented it, but not many people know the details of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the first implementation of cryptocurrency. Although there are thousands, first we talk about ledgers. When money is needed to be exchanged amongst individuals, it is easier to keep a ledger recording all the transactions that are needed to be made in the future. This can be kept online, where anyone can add or remove lines. At the end of the month, they can even out what everyone is owed. But since anyone can add lines, how do we know that they are accurate and trustworthy? Here we have the concept of digital signatures, allowing a person to approve any additions in the ledger. This signature cannot be copied. Every signature has a public key and secret key pair. A digital signature is stronger as it changes for every message. It consists of ones and zeros, and altering a message even slightly completely changes the signature on that message. So, a digital signature depends on the message and the secret key which ensures that only the person himself can use the signature and no one can copy it to be forged on another message. A public key is then used to verify this signature. These keys are 256-bit numbers, hence it is impossible for someone to even guess it. Moreover, to avoid anyone copying the message with the signature, the message also includes a unique ID. Hence, each similar message will require a new signature. Although eventually, a person could owe a lot and could refuse to settle their due. To avoid this, we begin the ledger with everyone giving in an amount that they are then owed. We then don't accept any transactions where anyone is overspending from what they already have on that ledger. Hence, any extra transactions will be invalid. But if the entries on the ledger are exchanged as physical cash, there will be no record of it. Bitcoin is a ledger the history of transactions in the currency. Everyone has their private ledgers, and when a public addition needs to be made, an individual may broadcast it out to everyone to add in their ledgers. But how can you be sure that everyone is recording those transactions and in the same order? A hash function is inputted in a message, and the output is a string of bits of any fixed length. It looks random even though it isn't. This output is called the hash, and slightly changing the input changes the output completely although the inverse of this is almost impossible. Now in Bitcoin, to agree on a correct ledger, it trusts whichever one has the most work put into it. It organizes each ledger into blocks, along with its proof of work. This is a special number, so that the hash of the whole block starts with a bunch of zeros. A block contains the hash of the previous block as well. Hence, changing the position of any block changes the hashes. This is now called a blockchain. The block with the proof of work also receives a block reward, and this block is broadcasted. Creating a block is called mining. It involves an individual finding a special number which makes the hash of the block start with many zeros. For people just using the system for transactions, they listen for blocks broadcasted by miners and update their own. So, if you hear two blockchains with similar histories, you defer to the longest one with the most work put into it. Hence, we don't need to trust any central authority, but just trust computational work. This is the concept behind Bitcoin.